What's going on guys, Jamie here back again with another episode and today our adventure for the second season starts. It is the Champions League group stage draw. As you can see we are one of eight teams that have been seeded second so without any hesitation let's get straight into it and as we can see as you would expect some really tough teams in pot one. Real Madrid, Juve, Bayern, PSG who we did knock out in the quarters last year. And then the likes of Porto, Zenit, and even Dynamo Kiev are a top seed. So some favourable teams in that pot for sure. Pot 2 sees us, again, some very strong teams. Three English teams in Pot 2. With us, Arsenal and Chelsea, along with Atletico Madrid, Barca and Sevilla, Dortmund and Napoli. So a really, really tough second pot. Third pot, uh, some good teams in there. AC Milan, most notable probably, and Monaco. Bilbao and Leverkusen, those some big teams. So... Again, some favourable teams in pot 3 and then pot 4. Inter in pot 4, that is quite surprising, although they haven't really been in much European competition as of late. Celtic in there as well, along with the teams like Feyenoord and FC Cologne as well. So, let's not waste any more time. Let's draw the first pot. So, we know we can't go into pot A, and there's definitely some groups that I would... Uh, I'd like to avoid that is for sure. So Man United will be joined by Dortmund. That's a great draw, All right? Group B, I would quite like to avoid Napoli. That is a tough, tough group. Okay, Porto, probably one of the teams you'd take. Atletico Madrid. Okay, Zenit, I would also take. Chelsea gets in it. Okay, PSG. Well, we did beat them last season, but they were top opposition. I would like to avoid them at group stage. It's Arsenal that gets PSG. Okay, of the last three pots, this is definitely the one I would prefer. So, come on. Yes, Dynamo Kiev. Excellent. Right, so we draw the last two. Bayern and Barca. What a great group that is. That means Sevilla will join Juventus. Now, looking at the teams of pot three, who would you fancy? Maybe Ghent or Salzburg? You see, Fenerbahce, the lowest rated team, but always a difficult team to play. Maybe CSK. Let's see how it pans out. So, United and Dortmund. AC, what a group that is turning out to be. That is some high quality games of great European teams of yesteryear. Madrid, Napoli and FC Salzburg. Okay. Porto, Atleti and Fenerbahce. Zenit and Chelsea get Monaco. That's an interesting group as well. PSG, Arsenal and Bilbao. Okay, so... There's one big team left there, Leverkusen. Probably prefer Ghent out of the three, or maybe CSKA. I'll take those two. It is Ghent. Okay, so turning out to be quite a favourable draw. CSKA going with Bayern and Barca, so that means Leverkusen with Juve and Sevilla. That is an interesting group as well. Okay, so the last team. You've got a feel for whoever the last team is. I mean, it are. Oh, I was going to say, if it was Inter, that would be mad, but it can't be Inter because AC are in there. So, who... Draws the short straw. Feyenoord. Well, you know, going away to Holland is never easy. Maybe they could cause an upset somewhere along the line. Finish off Real Madrid's group. They get Cologne. Victoria Plzen in Group C. Chelsea get Rijeka from Croatia. In Arsenal's group, FC Copenhagen. Okay, so we could get Celtic in our group, but we could also get into Milan. Although, I think I would prefer to lose. That is for sure. It is to lose. Well, every team I've said that we fancy, we have got. And that is one in a million. I notice Inter as well going to a group with Bayern and Barca. Some really tough groups there. But you've got to say, our group is extremely favourable. And we should progress, hopefully, with six wins out of six. But if we continue on, let's just see what the fixtures are. Are arranged so we will play the first two games in the group stage today okay so our first two games are away at Dynamo Kiev and then at home to Toulouse so those are the games that I will bring you in today's episode and I will join you for the Kiev game shortly here we are then game day one of the Champions League and I just want to recap our early season form with you uh, we've made hard work of it, that's for sure. So on the opening day, we beat Bournemouth 1-0 thanks to a fourth-minute Gabriel Jesus goal. Donnarumma and Dembele made their Premier League debuts in this game. And in we saw that Mendy went off injured in the Community Shield against Man United. As you can see, four to seven months damaged cruciates. It was a little bit longer, so he is going to be out for the majority of the season. 
and Alex Tellez was banned for the start of the season as he was sent off in one of the last games last season. So I had to call up young Eric Sarmiento. I did have a look in the transfer market for a new left wing back, but I didn't really want to splash out a ridiculous sum of money when we've got two good le- wing backs at a club. So Sarmiento is in the reserves. He's not that great. Only one star, two star potential ability, but he's filling in for now. Our second game away at Southampton. We were one nil up in this game. Sane on the score sheet, but Giovanni Dos Santos with four minutes to go equalised. And then a one-all draw at home to Brighton. Dembele got his first goal for us in this game. We were all over Brighton. It was just one of those days. A mistake from John Stones at the back allowed Andy Carroll in and he finished off nicely. So yeah, a tough game as well. Aguero missed a penalty, I think, in like the 10th minute. So... Like I said, just one of those days. And then in our last game, a really good win against Newcastle. We did go 1-0 down, but Aguero scored a magnificent solo goal. Must have taken on about four players and squeezed the ball in at the near post, past Carl Darlow. And then from there, we went on and secured the victory. Donnarumma was great in this game. Only a 6.8 rating, but I felt he did a lot better. Dembele with two assists in this game as well, a 9.0 rating. He was superb, as was Lionel. So... Yeah, for things starting to look up, if we have a look at the Premier League table quickly, we are fourth, one point behind Spurs and four points behind Stoke and Chelsea, who have both got 100% record so far. United not doing as good as they were last season, but it's still early days yet. Anyway, this is the team we are going to play for what is on paper probably our hardest game of the group stage. We are away at Dynamo Kiev first. And this is going to be the team. There's one change from the team that beat Newcastle. Jason Denier played in centre-half alongside John Stones in that game. But I've actually couldn't register him for the Champions League. I had too many players and too many foreign players in the spot. So, unfortunately, Denier was the person to miss out. So, there is one change. And we will go through that now. Donald Rubber in goal then. A back four of Walker, Stones, Otamendi. That is the change. And Alex Tellez. Silva and Fernandinho in the middle. Dembele and Lionel on either wing with Kevin De Bruyne playing the number 10 role. He has got a slight nod, it's only a gashed head though, so he should be able to play fairly comfortably in this game. And then Sergio up top. We are struggling for injuries and suspensions. As you can see, Hart not registered. Ruiz has got a hip injury, he's out for a couple of months. Mendy, as we said, has got that long-term injury. Sane is out for, he was out for about a month, so... He, I think he did his ligaments in training. And then Gundogan's coming back from his injury. Still about three weeks away, but I'll be very glad to have him back. Sterling's got a knock as well. So we are a bit down to bare bones, but hopefully we are in control fluid. Hopefully we can get something out of this game. Right then, let's get the game underway. Let's not worry. Let's give the fans who have travelled all the way to the Ukraine something to cheer. Uh... Yeah, I think we we won't underestimate our opponents. I think Dynamo Kiev, Dynamo Kiev can produce us problems, so we'll have to wait and see. And I did say, actually, in the previous bit about how Feyenoord, uh, they were in a tough group with United, AC and Dortmund, and they actually beat United on the first match day of the, uh, of the season. Shakespeare with a free kick, or Lionel, should I say, and there's a red guard. Did I miss that? Palette has been sent off for uh, Dynamo Kiev. Did I... I didn't see that at all. Okay, early advantage then as we get the ball, but it's a good tackle by Garmash and he clears away up to Akaka. Kiev still playing with two up top despite having a man sent off, so they've obviously gone with a three-man midfield and hopefully we can overrun that. But they keep possession nicely and switch over to Dembele, but Dembele intercepts. Switch over to Bassong, I should have said. Dembele keeps going. He cuts back, plays it in. It's gone all the way to Lionel at the back post. Everybody in the middle missed it. And Lionel, unmarked at the back post, has squeezed it into the net. 1-0. Another highlight straight away. Stones pumps it out to Dembele. He's been magnificent for us so far this season. And, and you would hope so with the amount of money that we paid for him. He loses the ball and Kiev trying to play possession but uh, they've lumped it upfield and now lost the ball De Bruyne comes deep then Lionel with Tellez on the overlap De Bruyne finds a great ball out to Tellez now can he get a good ball in he does Aguero oh it's hit the side netting good play there taking advantage of the space that's caused from having the extra man and we almost go 2-0 up Silva knocks a corner in Basson 
it's oh, it's a scramble. I didn't I didn't know what was happening. Then De Bruyne had a shot, and it looks like it hit the post, then hit the keeper. But they've managed to scramble it away, and we are all over Dynamo Kiev so far in this first half. And I think that is going to bring us to half time, and indeed it is. So one nil lead we take into half time, completely dominate the game. But you would expect that with the extra man. First highlight of the second half then, and Tellez plays nicely with De Bruyne on the edge, and De Bruyne puts it in the middle. Oh, Dembele's hit the post. as two chances he's had now with a bit of space, and he's failed to make either of them pay. I hope that doesn't come back to bite us, but we come forward again. Aguero gets by his man. Good play into the box. Lionel at the back post, and a very similar finish to his first goal. Much more of the net to aim at this time, and he doesn't waste that chance. 2-0 to City. We come forward again, chance after chance for us in this game. Dembele into the box, he finds Aguero, and Aguero makes it three. Dominant performance, as I've already said, and if this is the way the group stage is going to go, I fancy us to get six wins out of six. Donovan McKeon with the first chance of the game then, and they've actually scored. James McLean's come on, and he's taken the corner, and Garmash has knocked it down, and it's easy for Kravitz to finish. Disappointing there, we've dominated this game. I keep saying that. <laughs> I, keep, I need to expand my vocabulary and they come forward again here McLean knocks a free kick in and then Bacardi beat into the ball by Donnarumma and he just slows the play down launches it up towards Lionel with a good header down and Sterling who's come on now great ball to Fernandinho but it's a good tackle and can Kiev come forward again Kravitz has played through and Bacardi and Bacardi drills it into the bottom corner could the comeback be on Last kick of the game, then you would think we've gone over the allotted injury time, but maybe one last chance for Kiev. But it's a good tackle by Tellez. Jesus knocks it away. Aguero can come forward now. It plays out wide to Walker. And that's it, game over. A scary finish to that game. A good last 20 minutes for Dynamo Kiev, but we do manage to hold on and beat the 10 men, the 3 2. A good win nonetheless, though. And now we. Go on to the second game, which I believe is against Toulouse at home. It is indeed a few games between now and then, so I will play those and I will come back to you with the Toulouse game. Right then, game number two of the episode, we are at home to Toulouse, who top the table after one game. If we just recap the last few games since we're with you, a 3-1 win at home to Watford, Gabriel has used with two, Otamendi grabbing a goal as well, and then... We lost in the third round Carabao Cup to Tottenham. Edison made a horrendous mistake to give Harry Kane the goal that eventually was the winner. Played a bit of a rotated team, mainly in defence, and yeah, they cost us in this game. And then we absolutely tore apart Everton. We did go 1-0 down after three minutes. We made a couple of tactical tweaks and a couple of team instruction tweaks. And after that, we were electric. We absolutely tore them apart. Five different scorers. Jesus Denier getting on the score sheet, which was nice. Shakespeare, Dembele and Otamendi. And I was saying before, that, you know, we hope for big things from Usman Dembele. And he really is delivering. He has been absolutely superb for us so far. 7.58 in the league. Two goals, but six assists in six games. He really is proving his worth. We have opted for the 4-2-3-1 tactic again in this game. We did play it in the first game as well. Not our usual tactic, but it has been working fairly recently. And after Toulouse's good start, don't want to take too many chances. So, slight change from the last game. We've got Donnarumma in goal. Back four of Walker, Otamendi, Pepe is coming in in this game. And Alex Tellez on the left. Fernandinho and De Bruyne in the middle. And... I've set this up horribly. Sterling is going to be on the right-hand side. Lionel on the left-hand side. Dembele is going to play in the number 10 role today. And Gabriel Jesus is going to play up front. Right then, underway we are at the Etihad. I just wanted to say as well, we are having to fill out our bench with a load of youngsters. The injury crisis has hit us even more so in the past few games. Aguero went off injured in the game against Watford. Stones has got injured now as well. He's out for a few weeks. So it is getting to panic stations as Sterling whips a good ball across, but it's clear Dembele. What could he do with it? Whips it in, but it's headed away again. Fernandinho on the edge. Out to Walker. Fernandinho again. Good ball down the line again to Walker. Whips it in Shakespeare. It's a good save from Lafont. Saying that he's missed an absolute sitter, but it's a good save nonetheless. And the corner's headed away. And I think 
that will be that for that highlight. Dembele on the edge. Oh, he scores. Okay, I was quite surprised by that. Normally, once you've had a chance, a corner comes to nothing usually. But, you know, maybe I shouldn't second guess the game. A good goal from Dembele. And we find ourselves 1-0 up inside three minutes. Lafont with a big ball up top. But Walker is going to bring that down. And now Dembele gets the ball. De Bruyne. It's a great ball out to Shakespeare. Can he whip a good ball in? Jesus is there. We score that kind of goal so often. Play a good ball out wide. The wide man's got space. And he whips the ball in near post. And the striker is on hand just to tuck it away. It's so satisfying to see. And it's good to know that we're making good use of our wide areas. Anyway, Toulouse come forward now, and they don't because they give the ball away, and Dembele breaks with pace. He's running at players. He takes on two, whips the ball in, and it's claimed by the goalkeeper. It's a beautiful thing to see when an attacker is running at defenders. He's got them scared, and that's exactly what Dembele does. He's such a good player. I'm so glad we were able to bring him in. Have I said that already? <laughs> anyway, Sterling comes forward now. With space on the right, gets to the byline, whips in Jesus. Well, that was rather fortunate... Header from only a few yards out, he's managed to head it onto the post, but luckily it falls back to him, and he's tasked with placing the ball into an empty net. 3-0 in 11 minutes, and I believe that would be game over. Although it would be, but last time, actually, we saw that 3-0 wasn't such a comfortable scoreline, but I fancy to go on and uh, solidify this result even more. A few minutes now to go to half-time, and Lafont knocks it up, and... Tellers has missed it and Jean is in but it's a good save from Donnarumma. To lose his only highlight of the first half and it almost results in a goal but thanks to a mistake. It seems to be making quite a few defensive mistakes this season and that's something that I want us to get rid of because it is costing us in some games. So hopefully we can uh, get rid, as I said, of those. And Jesus grabs his hat-trick, an incisive breakaway. Dembele again, the man involved. And a first half hat trick for Gabriel Jesus. 4 0. But Toulouse come forward and they give the ball away. And now we can lump it clear. And Silva's in behind. Can he score? Yes, he can. Playing him up front has been justified. A long ball over the top by Kyle Walker. Misjudged by the defender. Silva's in. And it's a cool, calm, collected finish from the little Spaniard. And I think. That is going to be that. Ten seconds ago, Toulouse can't get the ball out of their own half. And I think the referee's whistle is going to be upon us. And there it is. A 5-0 victory. Ten goals in two games for us. Absolutely superb. But yeah, I think that is going to wrap up today's episode. I'm very happy with that result. So then, the next time I will see you is for the back-to-back -back Genk games we've got them home and then away and some massive games coming up as you can see Chelsea next to a second Arsenal and United on the horizon as well so it's going to be a difficult little period for us but hopefully as you can see on the back of that a couple of easier games Ipswich, but then it doesn't stop so yeah tough period coming up for us as we head towards the latter end of 2018 if we can have a quick look at the Champions League group as you can see then Two wins out of two for us, six points on the board. Kiev and Toulouse, three points apiece. Ghent sadly have lost both of their games. They suffered a 4 0 defeat to Dynamo, so looks like they could be the whipping boys. Gabriel Jesus at the top average rating in the competition so far with a 9.6, which is nice to see. But yeah, that is going to wrap up today's episode, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, click on the thumbs up button for me. It would be massively appreciated. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager content, and I will see you guys in a bit.